What's going on guys? Out here in the garage, got the uh, 98 CD GTX Limited. I acquired the ski not running. I uh, got a full rebuild, bottom end, top end, everything in between, gaskets, whatnot. Uh, when working on this, uh, I struggled finding some information that was pretty crucial. That would have been nice to know. So uh, I'm going to share some of the knowledge I've acquired on this ski. Once again, this is a 951. This won't pertain to the GTX that uh, isn't the limited model and has the 787 carb motor or the 800, whatever you want to call it. Like I said, 951 carb silver motor. So if you're planning on disassembling this motor, there's really a pretty basic process that you need to go through uh, in order to actually get everything where it needs to be. So the first thing that's going to need to come off, or the first thing I would say come off, obviously the plug wires, the temperature probe right here, and you can disconnect this vacuum line right here for the rave valves. These come off with just two bolts. I think they're a uh, six millimeter Allen. And uh, the biggest thing about this is probably going to be the pipe. So this is held on by three Allen bolts and a nut. You got one, two, three, and then you have a nut down here on the bottom side. I'll shine some light on that. Right down in there, that silver nut right there. That is inaccessible with the carburetors on with basic hand tools. Uh, now you could modify a wrench to fit in there by cutting it, shaving it and whatnot. But frankly, I'd rather not bang up my tools. So uh, if you're like me and you have pod filters, the first step is going to be the filters off. These are just held on by some hose clamps accessible with a flat blade or a uh, eight millimeter or seven millimeter socket. Next off, the carbs are going to have four bolts. One is right there. There's another one on this side, right there. These are uh, seven or eight millimeter Allen bolts. Now, if you have a set of Allen sockets, chances are you're not gonna be able to get in there. It's pretty tight. Um, the best thing I found to use is a set of keys like this. Now the top bolts, uh, you can't really rotate the key over fully, so you have to do it bit by bit. The bottom bolts you can rotate over fully, but the bottom bolts are uh, they're right down in there. I don't think I'm going to be able to get a good shot of them, but bear with me. If you just look at the intake manifold here, you can see the kind of bulge there where the bolt goes in. Same for the bottom right in there. So once you actually get the pod filter off, it's pretty easy to see. But there is an Allen bolt in the bottom there. After that comes off, then it's time to actually start removing the pipe. The pipe is bracketed on the motor in two locations. One right here by a 17 millimeter bolt. And then there's one on the back side. Actually, if you just look at this cooling port, trace right down and you'll be able to feel the whole bracket. Now that's an Allen bolt. You can get the Allen bolt out and that's pretty much all you need to do. Next, you have some, some small, tiny vacuum lines will probably be zip tied on. Uh, one right here and these two right here. The bottom line is the one that runs to the rave port. After that, you have a cooling hose right in there. Now mine's hose clamped on. I'm not sure how it comes from the factory, but this thing's been molested a couple times. So not sure if that's how it'll be stock, but uh, anyway, you're gonna wanna get that off. The next thing is gonna be the ginormous V-band clamp. This is a 13 millimeter nut. And if you have a deep well socket, undo that. And I will say, be careful, because this thing does have some pressure on it. It's, you know, it's spring loaded. So once this comes out to the end, Get your hands on there tight, or you're going to drop it right down into the abyss of the 951. After you get that off, this top of the tune pipe is pretty much going to be done. 
as long as you got the three allen head bolts and the nut on the bottom side that pipe you got to kind of snake it out otherwise you're gonna beat up your hole like i did after you've got this pipe off then um, you can pretty much start pulling the motor or getting to whatever you need to get to the cylinder head is just held on by eight nuts and uh what's it gonna be seven bolts bolts are 17 millimeter nuts are uh, 22 it's pretty tight in here so the way you can get these out and pull the head without actually having to pull the motor is when these studs get threaded out then you put a pair of vice grips on them get your 22 on there you may need to put some heat on it with a blowtorch or something like that something similar heat gun maybe uh, just be careful because if you're like me and there's kind of grease on everything be very flammable after you've done that you can remove your pto guard just hold on by a wing nut there and a wing nut right down here it should only be hand tight then you get to the fun part the motor mounts um now these i think are just uh 13 or 14 millimeter there's three of them there's gonna be another one another motor mount up here bear with me now right in there after you've done that then you're pretty much left with disconnecting the hoses the cooling hose on the back side right here there's another one down in here. I can't really see it very well. I uh, believe that's it for the lines that actually run to the block. But after you've done that, you're probably going to want to pull your exhaust bridge to the port here where it goes from a 2 to 1. That'll make it a lot easier to pull out. After that, you're left with uh, the decision of whether you want to disconnect the, uh, the wheel under here or whether you want to try and pop it out of the PTO. It may seem like it's press fit, but it's not. It's just a spline that runs to the jet pump. Uh, there's a fitting on there, and if you pop it off, it kind of releases like a vacuum pressure. So, you know, go your own way. The way I did it was when it was disconnected. Uh, just kind of gave it a couple of taps with a dead blow, and it slid right out. After that, you're pretty much ready to pull the motor. Uh, Think that's about it. If any of y'all have any questions or anything, I'd love to reply, try and spread my knowledge. Like I said, I couldn't find many good write-ups on actually pulling the motor, but chances are, if you're doing anything on the bottom side of this engine, it'll just be easier to pull it uh, rather than work in here and get your knuckles all busted up. So, like I said, any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments.